Hey everyone, welcome to Pawfology. So I'm just here in my apartment. I'm about to uh, sous vide a steak. So that's what I'm doing right now. Um, it's frozen. I think it will cook up pretty well in the next couple hours or uh, two and a half hours. And uh, that's what Emily will, and I will have for dinner. So I'm making that and some veggies and maybe some rice or something. I don't know. That's what I'm doing. Are you having a good day? Uh, are you having a good week so far? I'm, I'm looking forward to the weekend. Uh, today has been very crazy for me. It's just been, it's just been a crazy Thursday. So yeah, but I'm making the steak. You know, today's just one of those the days that I just wanna do nothing. I have no motivation. It's sunny though, it's pretty sunny. But I just still, I have no motivation. I'm very blah. I honestly just want to uh, just do nothing. I wanna play video games and just, just chill. But maybe I'll do that uh, later tonight. So hopefully I can do that later tonight. We'll see though, we'll see. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. I Last night I watched um, this HBO show called I'll Be Gone in the Dark, or I Will, I'll Be Gone, I Will Be Gone. It's about the Golden State Killer. Now that's a really good show. It, it gives me, um, what is it? Uh, like murder, oh, oh, what's it, crime junkies. It gives me crime junkie vibes. So it's kind of, uh, yeah, the, the person that's in, that's doing the documentary is very smart, it's very detailed. I really liked it. So I've been watching it. I think I'm on episode three and um, it's all about the Golden State Killer and just that journey of investigating the Golden State Killer. So, and it's done really well. Um, you know, I actually, so I didn't really know much about the Golden State Killer. Like I have, I, yeah, I don't know anything besides what I watch, but I spoiled it for myself because I looked up uh, who the Golden State Killer was and all of this stuff. So I guess they found him, maybe that's common knowledge. Here's a plant I've had, Emily and I have had probably for five or no, six years maybe. I gotta water it. So it's all about the Golden State Killer and just that journey, you know? But I never knew about it. Very interesting story. He's just all around interesting. So yeah, so that's why I've been watching. I've been wanting to watch something creepy, a little scary, and that kind of was that way, but I wanna watch something a little bit scarier. So I might go on a hunt for a new thing to watch. So, yeah, but I, I really like HBO stuff, HBO uh, documentaries. Oh, there's one coming out on, oh, I can't remember his name. It's He's a director, Woody Allen. Yeah, Woody Allen, he's the guy that married his adopted, let me look this up, Woody Allen, HBO. Yeah, so it's gonna be called, oh, I think uh, Allen versus, Pharaoh. I don't, I think it's supposed to come out this weekend. The first episode is, I think. So it's going to be all about Woody Allen and exposing Woody Allen. It's called, uh, I just said it, Allen versus Pharaoh, I think. Like F A R R O W. And Woody's an interesting guy. I mean, I don't know all his claims. I just know he married his adopted daughter. So that's weird. You know, that's a really weird. But. I'm excited for that. I think HBO does a great job at, at, you know, those type of things. I really like Vice's documentaries. I think Vice has amazing uh, documentaries. And I just finished one, which I might've said this, but I just finished one called something, something. It, it's about like this guy who was really weird and he lived in Salem, like the, the devil inside you or something. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. So, but yeah, I've been watching that. And oh, I also, what else have been learning about? Oh man, okay. I'm, I'm gonna have to talk about this in a little bit, but it's this guy who does really good journalism. And I learned all about Russia and this guy that they tried to kill, Russia tried to kill and stuff like that. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm, I'll be right back eventually. And then I wanna talk about this YouTube channel I found and it's really, really good. And if I was a journalist, 
I would want to make material that this person's making that you can find on YouTube. Okay, I'll be right back, bye. Hey everyone, so I'm back. I'm gonna turn this sous vide off. It's gonna beep. Okay, so um, I got my steak sous vide um, I want to tell you about a YouTuber I've been watching. He's, he's already really popular, but I like him a lot because he's educational and it's just very interesting topics. So yesterday I stumbled upon uh, this video called the most, uh, the man Putin fears the most. So, uh, oh, did I tell you the YouTube channel yet? No, I don't think so. His name is Johnny Harris. That's the YouTube channel, Johnny Harris. And he's a journalist or something. I don't really know what he does, but he just tells really good stories about many things. So the man Putin fears the most, you can watch it, but essentially it's this guy who uh, challenges the Russian politics, politicians and Putin. And um, it just tells the story about how uh, this guy was almost assassinated by Putin because he was just doing so many crazy stuff, exposing Russia hardcore, but in a really good um, news way. I, it would be similar to similar to like a late night show, but it was on YouTube. So it was this, this guy's like a famous YouTuber for, or like a talk show YouTuber, I guess you could say. And he was talking about Russia and explaining things to the people of Russia. And essentially Putin tried to assassinate him. And that's crazy. So I learned about that. I learned from Johnny Harris. And then I also learned about how China became so powerful. And it just is a really good perspective and explanation for, I guess, how China rebuilt itself. They have another video. Oh, where the U.S. hides its secrets. That's really interesting. It just talks about how uh, essentially the U.S. like made these offshore countries uh, Liberia and some other places and they put a lot of their important secrets there it's pretty interesting and a lot of shipping companies use Liberia and other places for uh, hosting companies so they don't have to pay taxes but really the US controls it it's so interesting it's so interesting and then my last one that I watched was how Sweden well, also how the U.S. snagged all these islands. That's a good video. But I think my favorite one besides the Russian video I watched was how Sweden stays neutral. And it's fascinating. Like how Sweden stayed neutral in World War II and how Sweden just stays neutral in general and how they're uh, a country that is just always on the defense. So very interesting. I really liked it and how now Sweden has become a safe haven for um, like essentially, a, let's say you have very important documents for your business or you need something stored very securely. Like let's say you're a Bitcoin person and you have, I don't know, maybe a hundred million dollars of Bitcoin that you wanna store away or you wanna put 10 million in this wherever, like in a chamber in a mountain. Sweden has this mountain that was turned into a safe that can with, that can uh, withstand, uh, I guess, atomic shock waves, and it's being marketed to the super rich. So very interesting. And, and let's say something did happen, well, you can store your stuff there uh, in a all out world war, world war attack again, world war again. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Anyways, it just talks about like Sweden's defenses and how they really are a safe haven for a lot of people. So very interesting. I, I really liked Johnny Harris. So that's what I've been watching in the past day, which was a lot. I consumed a lot. So yeah, I really liked that. I really liked his stuff. It, it was very, um, I, I really like journalism and things that expose uh, interesting facts and expose things for what they really are so yeah i would love to be able to do that i i think um i just i i love researching stuff to be able to find the truth whatever it is like you know why even if it's the business that makes these plants i i look into it if it's you know who makes dawn and how or how did this come into existence 
That's the type of stuff I'm I'm interested in. Now, the part I'm not that good at uh, that takes a team of people is putting together a video that like Johnny does. I mean, his stuff is, you know, legit. It's like hardcore, like perfect. It's like amazingly edited and I'm sure it takes so much money to do that or just a lot of time, maybe just a lot of time. So yeah, and experience. Yeah, so well, if you're still watching this, comment down below. Um, uh, I don't know, what should we do? What should I say? Comment down below. Wow, this is taking a long time for me. Oh, I, this is awkward now. Comment down below tweezers. We got these tweezers. Look at this. Look at these tweezers. These are some fancy tweezers. Comment down below tweezers. You know, everyone needs a good pair of tweezers and you probably need multiple ones of them. Can't tell you how many times I've been in a situation when I needed tweezers and I haven't had any and it's been awful. So yeah, but I got some now. I ordered a pack of them. It's nice to have around, just like batteries. I ordered some batteries. I try to keep uh, batteries within, within my living area my quarters so i always have them so yeah well i'm gonna go now i'll talk to you very soon uh, i'm gonna make this steak uh in a little bit and i guess we'll i'll just catch up with you in a little bit okay see you in a second bye hey everyone i wanted to show you the snow in downtown indy so it's not too bad the roads have been plowed but you can see there's you know that Mazda right there kind of having an issue but uh I guess this car down here's snowed in or they haven't moved their car there's a few cars down there snowed in but uh for the most part you know the snow's slowly melting it's kind of turned to a uh, wet snow now so that's what it looks like right now uh I guess a couple days after the big storm so just wanted to show you that okay I'll see you in just a second Bye. Hey everyone, I am going to make some dinner. I just turned the steak off. I haven't even looked at it. But uh, there's what it looks like. Yeah, it looks kind of gross, but I think it will taste really good once I sear it up. I also wanted to show you um, something that I saw on TikTok. Maybe you've seen it, and maybe you even did this in science class. It's the, I don't know if it's called the Cocoa Challenge, but it's where you get some chocolate cocoa and you put it in water and you see how the uh, cocoa repels the water. So I'm gonna show that to you right now. Okay, so I have my cocoa powder right here. It's just cocoa powder. And I got a spoon and I'm going to see if this cocoa powder, this spoonful of cocoa powder will resist this water. Some of you may have uh, done this in school. Oh, I already got some cocoa in there. Okay, here we go. I'm going to put this in. And it shows how waterproof cocoa is. See that? There's no water on it. Isn't that crazy? Okay, I'm going to do it one more time. Oh, it's a little bit of water on it. But I think if I touch it, it will disappear. That's crazy, okay. I'm having so much fun with this. Ooh. So it is muddy, but it quickly dissipates when I touch it. Oh, it's muddy now. Okay, but anyways, cocoa doesn't mix in the water. It doesn't dissolve very easily. Isn't that so interesting? So that was my little experiment using cocoa powder and water and a spoon as you see you can see it's still the cocoa powder is just kind of chilling there in the water resisting the water how interesting man well i'm going to make the steak make some veggies maybe make some rice i don't know emily's here she's just chilling on the couch and uh who knows what I'll do with the rest of today. Was there anything I was gonna talk about, Emily? 
So Emily asked me two questions. One was, uh, what is my favorite plant? And I ask you the same thing. What is your favorite plant? I'm gonna give an an I'm gonna give you two answers. So it's either basil or African violet. African violet, is that what it is? It's a purple flower plant. I think that's what it is. I think that's what it's called. So I like those plants. And then Emily also asked me if I could, if I only could go to one grocery store the rest of my life, where would I go? That's hard. That's hard because it just is. I don't know, I kind of feel like a logical place would be Walmart, though I never shop there. Like if I had to go somewhere the rest of my life, would, and Walmart's logical, Costco, I really like Costco. Like it, this is assuming I have unlimited money. If I had unlimited money, I would probably go to either, eh, I, okay, I would say Meyer. I love Meyer, but Walmart has a lot more items. I feel like just general things around the house that would be nice to have but it doesn't mean I can't go shopping at other places. It's just the grocery store. I don't know, I can't decide. I'm, I'm a grocery store lover. I don't know, I, I, don't, I don't have an answer. So I'm gonna probably say Meyer. Wow, I changed my answer like three times. That's okay. Which one, sh which one would you think I would go to? Meyer. Yeah, okay, Meyer, I choose Meyer. It's either Meyer or Costco, because I like the quality of meat at Costco, but they don't have really good high quality veggies so except the frozen ones they don't really have fresh good fresh produce at least at i mean at least here at my Meyer. i mean they have like you know some like you got your easy stuff like apples you know but they don't have the best of your greens and just different random stuff and they don't have many options for sauces so if you wanted sauce yeah, I'm just gonna say Meyer. Great question. What about pop? What about what? Oh, uh, what's my favorite soda? Um, I'd probably say Coca-Cola. I like Coke. Nice. I think that's my favorite soda. Yeah, Coke or uh, Diet Ginger Ale. But as far like if I'm looking to enjoy a soda, I want Coke. I think it's it's I just like it so much. So, oh, and that person that I, the YouTuber, I forget his name because it's later in the day that I was talking about earlier, he did a whole thing about how uh, Mexican Coke and regular Coke are the same thing now since 2013. So oftentimes Mexican Coke is marketed as having, uh, you're using sugar. Well, most places um, in Mexico that make Mexican Coke just use the um, fructose. You, they use a form of corn syrup to, they use a synthetic form of corn syrup essentially to get the, that flavor, I guess. Because in 2013, Mexico, the government of Mexico said uh, Mexico is the um, most obese country in the world. So they started putting taxes on sodas and the Coca-Cola uh, companies got taxed a lot. And so in order to save money, they um, they switched to corn syrup. But because they're so unregulated, about maybe only like 15% of the Mexican Coke that comes from Mexico is actually made with cane sugar. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. So because, yeah, so so many factories can just get away with it saying it is one thing, but it's really not. And because of the big boom of Mexican Coke in the past two or three years, um, yeah, it, it's just been very profitable for them. So, okay, that's enough of that. Well, I'm gonna go now. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Um, I hope you have a good Friday, a good weekend, whenever you watch this. If no one's told you this today, you are loved and this world's a better place because you are here. I'll see you tomorrow. And I just wanna say thank you just so much for everyone watching these videos and liking these videos and following uh, my life and Emily's life, our life and in, in Indy. So thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. Uh, I love reading all your comments and just thank you for being so kind to us. So, okay, we'll talk to you later. Bye.